What are you talking about? All right, so we're talking here about the fact that in the last decade, nutritional science has made radical advances, even flipped over, and people had to make tremendous changes in the way they think about eating for longevity, health, and disease. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. Today, we will learn from Dr. Joel Foreman, a leading physician and nutrition expert who has dedicated his career to understanding how diet impacts health and longevity. Believing strongly in food as medicine, his research emphasizes the power of nutrition to extend life, increase stem cells, lengthen telomeres, prevent cancer, and chronic diseases. Foreman's approach centers on consuming nutrient-dense foods to achieve optimal health and longevity. Foreman's nutritional philosophy revolves around the idea that dietary choices profoundly impact lifespan and telomere aging. You can slow the aging process, stop telomeres from aging, increase stem cell longevity, and you can age backwards. Unlike the typical Western diet, rich in processed foods, unhealthy fats, and excessive sugars, Foreman emphasizes nutrient-dense, plant-based foods. These foods, brimming with vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, fuel the body for optimal health and longevity. We'll explore the nutritarian diet, Foreman's brainchild, and its potential to enhance both lifespan and health span. This dietary approach counters the detrimental effects of the standard Western diet by focusing on disease prevention. You'll learn how dietary choices can dramatically reduce the risk of premature death and gain insights into the science behind nutrition and aging. Whether your goal is increased longevity, improved quality of life, or simply a better understanding of nutrition's impact, Foreman's expertise offers valuable knowledge. Oh. A quick favor, we'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Join us as we uncover the life-saving benefits of a nutrient-rich diet and learn how to shield yourself from the perils of poor nutrition. And one foundational thing I'm speaking about today is there's not one special diet to prevent and reverse heart disease and then a different diet to prevent and reverse cancer. It's the same dietary portfolio and the same, you know, symphony of food choices that most effectively prevents heart attacks and strokes. And at the same time, most effectively slows aging and improves immune function and prevents cancer. So it's not a cancer reversal diet and a heart disease diet are the same thing. And there's no anti-dementia program or anti-dementia diet because the same dietary portfolio that's maximally protective against cancer is maximally protective against dementia. One size fits all. <laughs> it's Dr. Foreman's Nutritarian Diet. Dr. Foreman will now tell us more about what is possible as far as longevity is concerned through nutrition. And one thing we're trying to achieve here is because we know we can radically extend human lifespan and we can change the bell-shaped curve from centering around age 80, and we can shift that over so the bell centers around age 100. We can live 100, you know, 20 years longer with excellent nutrition. And as we shift that bell-shaped curve over, the bell narrows. And what I'm saying is right now, people, the average lifespan may be around 80, but people die at 60, 70, 80, 90, 95. They're scattered all over the place. And it's like a crapshoot. And I'm saying not only can we shift that bell to the right by 20 years, but we can narrow the bell. So most everybody lives between 95 and 105. And we don't see a big scattering of people dying 10 or 15 years longer. And we can make us and we enable the healthy life expectancy that gives us full mental faculties and physical abilities in our later years. And that's what I'm striving for, to make sure that you live longer without any brain shrinkage without any cognitive impairment, without Parkinson's, without any disabil neurologic disabilities that can make living longer not worth it. So with that as an introduction, let's get started. Okay, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Just what is a nutritarian diet? And we're talking here about the foundational principle of a nutritarian diet. And I'm saying the word nutritarian diet means a diet idealized to maximize human longevity and not just contain a high amount of nutrients, 
but contain the wide diversity of nutrients humans need to push the envelope of human longevity. You can't just eat a lot of kale. Just eat a lot of kale and strawberries and get all those nutrients into you and to live longer. Yeah, maybe. But it's much more effective when we have a lot of ver different variety of different nutrients and not just pushing up a lot of one or two types, but getting as more a broad variety as possible without exceeding our need for calories. So leading to this basic health equation, which means how long you're going to live and the quality of your life is linked to the micronutrient bang per caloric buck. Yeah, of course but also that micronutrient diversity, getting a wide spectrum of nutrients and making sure that nobody's missing any particular nutrient. Because you can have loads of all these great nutrients, but if you're deficient in iodine, you're deficient in B12, you're deficient in zinc, you're deficient in DHA, there's something you're missing. That one thing you're missing could be your downfall and cause problems. So we wanna make sure that you have comprehensive nutritional adequacy, not being having ideal levels of all the nutrients humans need to maximize human lifespan. And that's what a combination of eating right and also the judicious use of blood tests and the judicious use of supplements to assure we have adequate levels because some people have needs may vary and the amount of that we take in may have to be adjusted to hit that sweet spot of perfection. So the foundational principle I'm talking about, I want you to remember these five words. The most proven methodology to extend human lifespan and slow aging is this. Moderate caloric restriction. That's three words. Moderate caloric restriction in the context of micronutrient excellence. That's two more words, micronutrient excellence. Put together those five words and write them down. Let me say it one more time. Moderate caloric restriction in the context of micronutrient excellence. And I'm also saying you can't achieve a healthy body weight. You can't achieve the degree of moderate caloric restriction to stay slim and strong and, and unless you achieve pretty close to micronutrient adequacy or micronutrient excellence because micronutrient deficits and eating poor foods makes you into a calorie consuming monster and drives you into overeating behavior. So nutrient fulfillment is a key factor in making you satisfied with the right amount of calories and preventing overeating. So we're going, we're discussing here how with the acts, with the onset of the processed food movement and people eating more foods that are not grown in their vegetable gardens or in their local habitats, but we're eating more processed foods, bread, bagels, salad oil, pizza, burgers, things out of bags and boxes and tang and Twinkies and donuts and whatever people are eating. We could see from the 1960s with the start of the fast food move movement and the processed food movement to now we see obesity and over the amount of overweight Americans climbing and continues to climb and excess body fat is the major killer not COVID, not cancer, not heart attacks, because excess body fat is the underlying mechanism with most powerful mechanism, increasing risk of death from COVID, increasing risk of death from other infections, increasing risk of death from cancer, increasing risk of death from heart attack. The doctor will describe what he feels about fat. Fat on the body is pathologic. There's no such thing as a healthy, overweight person. I know a lot of people think that um, that 70% of our population is overweight. But that's not true. That's because the US government sets the BMI of 25 as the demarcation line between an overweight person and a normal weight person. So with a BMI below 25, they're classifying you as normal weight, but all long lived people's centenarian populations, blue zones, in other words, studying people who live healthfully in the long, are not people with the BMIs of 23 and 24 and 25. They're actually people with, a, with women with a BMI below 21 and males with a BMI of below 22. If we look at the American population and look at those with the BMI below 23, now we have 89% of the population is overweight. Not 70%, but 89%. So almost 90% of our population is overweight. Looking at that 10% of people in America that, not are, that are not, that have a BMI below 23, the majority of those people are sickly. There's, most of them smoke or they're alcoholics or they have some emotional or mental disorders. 
or they have autoimmune conditions or digestive disorders or occult cancers. What I'm saying right now is the vast majority of people in the normal weight category in America, even in Western Europe, represent people who are sickly and who smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol or have some diseases keeping them slim. Because if they were eating like other people eat and they were healthy, they'd become overweight. Because the modern diet with all the bread and pasta and olive oil and, and concentrated calories is so disease causing and so obesity agenic. It's so, you know, the modern diet is so easily causes the excess desire for calories and, and promotes fat storage and resists fat breakdown. The modern diet is so fattening that you have to be sick to be a normal weight. It's only 2.4% of Americans that are a normal weight because they eat um, better than most and exercise regularly. So we really have to, and so that's why it looks like, so people with this um, idea of like anti-fat shaming or this movement that fat is good or being overweight is good is all based on juggling and misinterpreting of the literature by studying people that are normal weight that are sick not studying the 2.4% of Americans that are normal weight because they eat healthy and rec exercise regularly. It almost looks like being moderately overweight is protective against disease. If you look at just longevity studies, because people who are, because people get sick and get underweight when they're really sick. Okay, but in any case, I'm saying here that fat on the body is abnormal. There's no such thing as fat on the body with early human populations. There's no this degree of fat on the body with primate populations or any wild animals with so much body fat. And fat on the body increases insulin resistance, which means that when you eat a piece of fruit, a bowl of oatmeal, you know, a, a, a some beans, when you eat something with carbohydrate in it, you have a heightened glycemic response. You have a flood of glucose that rises in the bloodstream higher because your body has a harder time taking the, in, taking the glucose out of the bloodstream. And in doing so, it makes the beta cells in the pancreas produce more insulin. So you have a higher insulin response to any carbohydrate you eat when you're overweight. All overweight people are producing abnormally high amounts of insulin. And insulin is a hormone that only, not only prevent, prevents fat storage, but it promotes cellular replication and growth, promoting cancer. In higher levels of insulin increase angiogenesis producing hormones and the activating angiogenesis, and of course, you may know the word angiogenesis, means the growth of new blood vessels. So cells can replicate and grow. Cancer cells cannot replicate and grow and metastasize and invade and without angiogenesis promotion. Without excessive elevation of insulin, cancer is very hard to be generated and maintained in the body. You need high sugar in the bloodstream. You need high insulin to promote angiogenesis. And the fat cells also, because they're naturally hypoxic tissue, they don't get a great blood supply. So they naturally spew out free radicals, reactive oxygen species, ROS, the primary reactive oxygen species produced by the body, and a cascade of inflammatory compounds like cytokines and, lip and lipokines. In other words, the fat cells release in pro-inflammatory tissues that promote inflammation and cancer and increase your risk of infection. And those inflammatory compounds also activate aromatase enzymes which means your body produces more estrogen. So now you have abnormally high circulating levels of estrogen, which increase your risk of breast and prostate cancer and, coast, and cause a host of diseases like endometriosis and fibroids and all types of prostate enlargement and all types of um, problems with people because they have a, um, because of this increasing body fat. Now, Dr. Foreman will review what he has been talking about. So just to review what I'm saying right now, it's that it's essential for people to get rid of their body fat if they expect to live, push the envelope of human longevity and, and live as long as they possibly can. Doctor will talk about how our perception of normal has changed over the years. So, you know, people's perception of normal has changed 
The average woman in America weighs 160 pounds. The average male weighs 180 pounds. Of course, I'm saying like for the average height woman, you know, 130 is the upper limit of normal, but obviously below 120 is more lifespan favorable. The average 5'10 male, one's 80, 165 is probably the upper limit of normal. But of course, below 160 is probably even more favorable. And don't, and and people might be thinking, well, what about a person who's more muscular, you know, bigger and there? It's not fat, it's just muscle. And the answer is, in most cases, excessively largeness due to muscle and excess bone is also lifespan shortening because people had to overeat and eat excessive amount of animal products or eat to be able to get that large. In other words, the shortest lifespans in North America, the occupation of the shortest lifespan, are linebackers on football teams who are overly muscled, they may have extra fat too, but these overly muscled males, these big power lifters, these big strong guys with pot, little pot bellies and big muscles, you know, even though the, the, that extra muscle weight also puts stress on their heart and their and the cell and ages their cells prematurely and they're chronically overeating which keeps their metabolic revved up metabolism revved up and they're trying to maximize performance with being as large as they possibly can is not maximizing longevity it's actually shortening their lifespan to review there at the bottom i have favorable body weight for a woman is a bmi below 21 and for a male is below 22 ideally and a favorable body fat for women's below 25% and below 15% for a male. And even that's a little bit permissive. I mean, I'm 67 years old and my body fat's 11%. You know, so I think that even, even probably below 13 or 14 is probably better for a male, but I'm accepting the, the a little extra, you know, um, acceptability there, especially for women because they naturally have more fat than males do. What's the effect of extra fat on health? Now, of course, we're looking at this from infection and obese and being overweight is the biggest risk factor for early death from pneumonia, flu and other infections, including COVID. So even a few extra pounds, just having when you should weigh 120 pounds and you weigh 125, even that's associated with increased premature death from infection. So we're saying here that we have a nation, a dangerous worldwide epidemic not of infection and COVID and cancer and heart disease, but a dangerous epidemic of the malnourished overweight. It means they eat extra calories and to gain those extra fat on the body, they're eating low nutrient calories, not high nutrient calories. And, they're, and the fat then contributes to that malnourished state. Let me explain one minute about that. I'm saying that fat cells sequester nutrients. In other words, if I took a glass of carrot juice and I poured it into a quart of water and you know, shook it up, you could see there's still a lot of carrot in there. It's an orange quart of water with carrot juice in it. But if I saying that same glass of cup of carrot juice and I pour it into a gallon of water, not a quart, but a whole gallon and shake it up, it's going to be diluted. So you're not going to see the, the water is orange. In other words, the nutrient density is dil diluted by the extra body weight. But what I'm saying here is that fat cells sequester nutrients over and above the amount of space and weight they occupy in the body, especially fat soluble nutrients. So we suck nutrients into the fat cells away from the cells and the brain and the other areas we need them to prevent us from, um, to keep ourselves aging slower. So we have a whole, so being overweight makes you malnourished and increases your nutrient um, needs of the body. You know, I always say to people in the big audiences, I say, raise your hand. If somebody's been shot by a bullet, your friends, your family, your neighbors been shot by a bullet, raise your hand. Like one person out of the 700 people raises their hand. They say, raise your hand if you've been stabbed by a knife in your neck or your chest or, you know, and, and nobody raises their hand. I say, well, well how many people here has been, has a, a family member or a friend or a neighbor who's got cancer or a heart attack or a stroke? And like everybody, practically everybody raises their hand. I'm saying, what, this is crazy. How could you live in such a dangerous neighborhood? How do you, do you stay living in that neighborhood? How do you live like other Americans live? How do you stay eating the foods other Americans stay? Do you got to get out of that neighborhood? You got to change things. 
because we know the danger that's invaded our neighborhood with fast food restaurants and donuts and fried foods and french fries and burgers we know that we've been you know been eating ourselves to death it's in our neighborhood it sounds like we have learned a lot about the influence of good nutrition in the light of the fact that nutritional science has made such radical advances where people can live longer our population has moved in the war in the opposite direction so let me just discuss this metabolism and aging for a minute to make sure you understand that if i if my body needs let's say are 1500 calories a day and i eat 1700 calories a day an extra 200 calories my body will not turn those extra 200 calories all into body fat because it's a lack of 3500 calories a pound so 350 days a year approximately so every 100 calories of excess a day should turn into 10 pounds a year of extra body weight so be 200 calories extra over and above my basal metabolic needs that should result in a 20 pound weight gain that year but it doesn't because my body resists weight gain as much as it can it's struggling to not to turn all those calories into fat so what the body will do is it'll rev up its metabolic rate. It'll raise its body temperature. It'll raise the respiratory quotient, the amount of calories burned through breathing. It'll increase its thyroid function. My body will set into motion a series of biological events that'll try to burn off those calories. So I'll only gain 10 pounds, not 20 pounds. My body's fighting for your behalf, but it's a pact with the devil because increasing your metabolic rate from the extra calories you're consuming is speeding the rate at which you're aging and aging your telomeres and your stem cells and usurping and utilizing your natural lifespan and forces prematurely. What I'm saying right now is that when we overshoot calories, we don't just gain weight, we increase the, our metabolism and increase the rate via which we age. Don't forget, in the bottom half of normal, if you look at the normal level of thyroid function, in the bottom half of normal, you have the longest lifespan, less irregular heartbeats, sudden cardiac death, less heart attacks, half the heart attacks as people in the upper, in the upper half of normal. Keep in mind when people have um, thyroid, you know, hypothyroidism, they're taking medications for thyroid, for their thyroid. Don't overtake it to maximally suppress your weight, your TSH. Keep your TSH between two and four. Don't push it down low so you can try to lose weight with thyroid medication. Don't take thyroid medication as a means of thinking it's gonna help you lose weight or lower your cholesterol like the anti-aging community gives you because you're gonna be pushing your metabolism and aging faster. We wanna age slower, not fast, faster. When we cut back on calories, when we undershoot our calories by a little bit each day, we go to bed a little touch hungrier many nights. We just overshoot our calories to keep ourselves nice and slim. And when I undershoot calories by 100 calories a, day, uh, a night, I'm not going to 100 calories a day on the average. I'm not going to then lose 10 pounds. My body will become re very resistant to losing weight. My, I exercise regularly. And so my body knows I'm utilizing muscles. So it wants to keep those muscles. And it has a certain metabolic set point, which it prefers to live at. And if you exercise regularly and live at that favorable metabolic set point, as you undershoot calories a little bit, you won't keep losing weight. Your body will resist the weight loss by lowering your thyroid function, by lowering your body temperature. Sure, you'll be colder in the winter. Your hands and feet may be colder. You'll be more comfortable in the hot weather. You lose less calories through breathing. You'll lower. In other words, your body sets into motion a series of biological events that slows the rate at which you age. And what I'm saying here, that's the secret to living to be 100 years old, is keeping slim but muscular and strong as we undershoot calories just by a hair. Dr. Foreman will now explain the effects of overeating. You know, so we're talking here about overeating, which makes our fat cells become metabolically unfavorable, and then the overeating, which is foods that don't contain a lot of nutrients, build up toxins like advanced glycation end products from cooked carbohydrate, like people like the, like the crust of bagels and pizzas and chips and French fries. When you bake things and you make you toast bread and make it brown, you blacken, you form more of these acrylamides and, and advanced glycation end products in the body, which age us. 
the advanced glycation end products, the oxygen species, aldehydes, ammonia, uric acid, urea. There's a lot of toxins that build us, build up in the body and we don't eat healthfully. And when those toxins build up, we feel fatigued all the time. And we have to overeat. We have to keep the calories coming in all the time. We got to become a calorie consuming monster. We use calories, we become a food addict because we don't feel comfortable with the right amount of calories. You have to overconsume calories to feel okay when your body is not clean, let's say, you know. The doctor will now express a radical claim about something that many use every day. And oils, of course, are all toxic. There's no such thing as a healthy oil. Which oil is the healthiest oil? Who cares which oil is the healthiest? They're all fattening. I'm making this radical claim right now. I'm saying olive oil causes breast cancer and prostate. How can I make something, something that was ridiculous as saying a healthy oil like olive oil causes, causes cancer? Because people are overweight and they're pouring more high calorie oil on their food. And the average person is using 300 to 500 calories of oil on their food. Whether they're cooking it, pouring it on salads, they can't lose weight consuming all those extra oil calories because oil, cal oil is an appetite stimulant. It rushes into the bloodstream very rapidly. It doesn't lower your apostat or your appetite. So you eat, have that tablespoon of oil on your food, it makes you want to eat more, not want to eat less. And when you cook food in oil and it's fried, especially with fast foods, one of the hallmarks of fast food is that you cook food in oil and they fry things and it forms, the oils degrade and form more toxic carcinogenic compounds. It even causes cancer just to work in a fast food restaurant, even if you don't eat the food. But of course, we're saying here that cooked vegetable oil is probably even more dangerous than eating animal than eating red meat, you know. And but even maybe even in more dangerous than eating sugar. Of course, sugar in you know eating sweets is is um is dangerous. Dr. Foreman has this to say about refined baked goods. And don't forget that white flour equals sugar. When you eat a piece of pizza or a bagel or a croissant or a piece of white bread, you're eating candy. That's candy, that's cake. Because the body doesn't differentiate from eating sugar and eating honey and maple syrup or white or eating candy corn or marshmallows or eating white bread. White bread and marshmallows are the same thing because it still enters the bloodstream as glucose, as concentrated glucose, in a, which coming in too rapidly, stimulating dopamine centers in the brain feed and want to become sweet addicted, increasing your desire to eat more calories and making you feel chronically ill unless you chronically overeat. I'm saying that if you want to get sick and overweight, then put a lot of sugar, salt, sweetener, salt and oil in your food and use white flour. So don't think it's like, what's the word? Benign to have a piece of bread or a bagel or a burger bun or a pizza, because that's junk. It's the cake diet Americans eat. I call it the cake diet. For breakfast, they have a muffin. That's a piece of cake without the icing on it. Or even worse, they have a pancake or a waffle, which is a fried cake, and then they put sugar, more sugar on the cake itself. It's the craziest where they eat cold cereals, which are like cake, like puff cereals, like Fruit Loops, and all kinds of other junk with some sweeteners. And then they have lunch, and they have bread and pizza with a burger or a pizza's cake with cheese on top or a burger with, with, with cake on both sides and things are, and of course the fast food manufacturers don't just put salt in the bread, they put salt in the French fry batter, they put salt inside the burger meat, they get you salting up everything so you'd wanna drink more soda and you wanna make you wanna eat more and salt obviously is a tremendously detrimental substance to shorten human lifespan, but it's also an appetite stimulant. You wanna really become overweight you sweeten salt and oil and use a lot of white flour products. But if you want to achieve an ideal weight and ideal health, you have no choice. You have to take out the sweeteners, the salt and the oil. You're not going to have a favorable body fat percent with a lot of oil in your diet. It's impossible. Dr. Foreman will now tell us a little bit about the importance of when we eat. And I'm also saying here that digestion insulin sensitivity and favorable metabolic rate is enhanced in the morning and through the mid-section of the day. And we want to eat earlier in the day, eat a lighter and earlier dinner and not eat a heavy meal at night. You know how a lot of Europeans eat a big dinner late at nine o'clock at night and go to bed after a heavy dinner. That does not enhance lifespan. 
It's digesting food during sleep increases aging. Slower aging means sleeping without having food in your digestive tract. You want to finish eating for the day, maybe by five o'clock, six o'clock the latest, and give yourself a good four hours. And you can't eat that heavy at six o'clock or seven o'clock either. You have to eat light enough so digestion can finish before you go to bed at night. So you shouldn't be eating your biggest meal of the day late at night, and you should be trying to eating a lighter and earlier dinner and consistent going to bed at a consistent bedtime in a very dark room. Dr. Foreman will now tell us what are the healthiest foods in the world. Now, we know that vegetables portions, that vegetables are the healthiest food in the world. And vegetable portions per day incre decrease risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer, restoring elasticity, accelerating reversal of heart disease. We know vegetables are the most protective food against cancer and heart disease, particularly raw vegetables. Because when you cook vegetables, especially green vegetables, green cruciferous vegetables, you deactivate the enzyme the myrosinase enzyme in green cruciferous vegetables is deactivated. So, you know, so let's kind of review what I've reviewed, what I've, what you've learned so far today. We're saying that the body has the ability to live a lot longer, to slow the aging process, to stop telomeres from aging. And actually I'm saying you can age backwards. That's as ridiculous. And people saying, what? You can't, you can slow aging. You can't age backwards. That's crazy. And I'm saying, no, I see it all the time. We see people in better health. They look better. Their skin looks younger. Their gray hair turns back darker again. We see, we measure people's telomere age. And we see that after they change to a new, ideal nutritarian diet, their telomeres, which showed their biological age was 10 years older than their chronological age. And there's this 50 year old, a 60 year old telomeres. And now after three months of dietary change, their telomeres are back to a 60 year old and back to a 50 year old, not a 60 year old. And after a year of, of dietary change, their telomeres are down to a 40 year old when they're now, their chronological age is 60. We, we watch people resist aging and build up those anti-aging proteins like CERT1 and AMP kinase, which have, which improve, which slow the aging process and stabilize telomere, increase stem cell longevity, and maintenance and prevent inflammation and all the factors that age us. And we're saying here that the wide exposure to hundreds, thousands of phytochemicals and color, different colorful plants. We're all gonna live forever! The following is one of the key components of a nutritarian diet. Particularly G-bombs, right? G-bombs. Greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries and seeds, berries like wild blueberries and blackberries, those dark berries, those low sugar fruits, the seeds like flax, chia, hemp, have all these lignans and, and, and beneficial compounds in them. We're saying that the broad spectrum, including onions and mushrooms in the diet, defines a nutritarian diet with the wide exposure to phytochemical, not like a macrobiotic diet, eating mostly rice or a, you know, a potato based diet or a fruit vegetarian diet, mostly fruit. We're looking for a diet with lots of vegetables with a wide variety of foods in it, expanding your exposure to phytochemicals, not narrowing it, regular exercise and moderate caloric restriction to keep yourself slim and muscular and keep your weight stable at the most favorable weight as you age are the secret to slowing the aging process. The doctor will now reveal why eating animal products can be so bad for you. And obviously animal protein drives up growth promoting hormones like IGF-1 and excessive calories in general, like extra oil from excessive calories, extra sweets, extra high glycemic foods, which are so dangerous, putting sweeteners on our food. And we get acclimated to liking sweeteners and wanting sweeteners, sweeteners and wanting things sweeter. When you're off those sweetening agents, people say to me, why don't I just have stevia and xylitol and, and monk fruit and low calorie sweeteners? Because you're perpetuating your desire to eat overly sweetened substances. Now a strawberry doesn't taste that sweet to you. Lettuce doesn't have as much flavor and sweetness. Carrots aren't as sweet. Beets aren't. Natural foods no longer have great flavor because you're chronically exposing yourself to excessive concentrations of sweeteners. I'm saying you actually enjoy food more when you get all that crap junk out of your diet, diet. And of course, and it's combination between the animal protein and the high glycemic carbohydrates put people at risk. And don't forget, fish is animal protein. 
And we dump a thousand tons of plastic into the oceans every hour. Every hour, a thousand tons of plastic. And microplastics have invaded our oceans and our fish supply. Even if a little bit of animal products wouldn't be harmful, a little bit of salamander, snake, you know, oysters or fish or something like that, or frogs, um, worms. A little bit of animal products probably wouldn't be healthy on an over, overwise healthy diet, but in today's society, it seems like you have to be very careful with that because even, even the seals and the polar bears are polluted. But what we're saying right now is there's an incredibly heightened amount of pollution, especially microplastic particles in, in fish farmed and caught off the coastal regions of, of, um, of Western Europe and of the um, United States um, because we have so much plastic dumping in the ocean. Next, watch the Dr. Joel Foreman Club playlist for more information on the nutritarian diet. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.